we are go live. Thank you for joining us. Um, in order to ensure all families are able to access this presentation in their preferred communication language, we are providing simultaneous interpretation in Spanish today. Please press the globe at the bottom of your computer screen and select your preferred language. If you are watching on a phone, press the three dots at the bottom right of your screen and then select your preferred language. Thank you. Buenas noches y bienvenidos para el español o prima el globo en su ordenador o los tres puntitos en su celular y luego escoja el español. Gracias. Good evening. We are going to give everyone a chance to join our webinar. Okay, my name is Penny Harrison and I am the very proud principal of Douglas MacArthur Elementary School. Today, I welcome you to the kindergarten virtual open house. Tonight, you'll have the opportunity to meet the kindergarten team as well as to find all about information about Douglas MacArthur and about the registration process. My team will introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Rebecca Pittman, and I am one of the assistant principals here at Douglas MacArthur Elementary School, and we are just thrilled to welcome our newest MacArthur families. Hello, kindergarten family. Uh, my name is Steve Jeter. I'm the other assistant principal at Douglas MacArthur, and we are very happy to have you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Karen Lazo. I'm the Douglas MacArthur School Registrar. I'm in the picture, you can also see our office team, Cindy Flores, our treasurer, and Jenny Contreras, our support specialist. Hello, I'm Lakita Robinson, instructional assistant in kindergarten. Hello, my name is Shahida Khanum. I'm an instructional assistant kindergarten at Douglas MacArthur. Hi everybody, I'm Paula Crail, I am also an instructional assistant in kindergarten. Hi everyone, I'm Melissa Casamo. I'm a kindergarten teacher. Ms. Lutz, can you reintroduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm Karen Lutz and I uh, will be teaching kindergarten in the fall. I am teaching second grade this year at MacArthur. Hi, I'm Abigail Harmatz. I am also one of the kindergarten teachers. I will be joining the team in the fall. I currently teach first grade. Hi, I'm Molly Stephanie, um, and I'll be rejoining Douglas MacArthur on the kindergarten team next year. Hi, everyone. My name is Caroline Kelly, and I am one of the kindergarten teachers at Douglas MacArthur. Hi, I'm Kate Martin, and I'm a kindergarten teacher at MacArthur. Hello, I'm Tashika Smith, and I'm an instructional assistant. Give us that one more time, Ms. Robeson. Ms. Robeson, you're on. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Gail Robeson, and I'm an instructional assistant at Douglas MacArthur. And now we would like to give you a little sneak peek of a day at kindergarten at Douglas MacArthur.
families, my name is Caroline Kelly and I am one of the kindergarten teachers here at Douglas MacArthur. I'm so excited to welcome you to our virtual kindergarten open house. Right now we're going to take you through a brief tour of our school. We are at our swing space currently on Taney Avenue. So welcome and come on in. So when your child comes in in the morning, if they get off the bus, they will be entering the main lobby where I am now. When you come in, the main office is on your left and your child will come in and be greeted by our staff in the morning and they will be escorted to their kindergarten classroom. I am going to take you right over to our kindergarten wing next so you can follow me. Okay, so next we're going to head right up this ramp and once we go up this ramp we are now entering the kindergarten hallway. Once we get up the ramp, we have each kindergartner's room. We are going to look at a kindergarten classroom today, which is my room. And my room is the second door on the left. So follow me and you can see our kindergarten room. Some of our kindergarten rooms even have a door right outside that leads us to our playground. So I'm gonna show you real quick what the kindergarten playground looks like. Follow me. So this is what a typical kindergarten classroom will look like at our school. As you can see right now, we are only set up to have five to seven students, so next year that will look a little bit different. But this is where your child will come in in the morning and spend time with their homeroom teacher and their instructional assistant. Each kindergarten classroom has an instructional assistant that helps us with teaching and learning. Here they will be learning all of their core subject areas like reading, math, science, and social studies. We hope you enjoyed having a quick tour of our rooms and we look forward to seeing you. So now that you've seen a kindergarten classroom, we're going to show you some of the other important spaces in our school that your child will be seeing each week. Here is the gym and this is where your child will have PE class and sometimes indoor recess as well. Hi, I'm Mrs. Pinheiro. I am Mr. Dowd. I'm Mr. Harris, and we are your three PE teachers. Next up is our media center, and this is where your child will come for their library encore class. Here we go. Hi, I'm Miss Martin. I'm the school librarian. And here we are in our encore wing. So this is where your child will come for their art and music classes. Hello, I'm Mrs. Donaldson. I'm the art teacher. Hi, I'm Miss Brocious and I teach music. I'm Mrs. Tramiel and I teach music. Here we are at our cafeteria and this is where your child will come to have lunch with their classmates. where your child will come if they need to see our nurse, Miss Desmond. Thank you so much for joining us at our kindergarten open house. 
We so look forward to meeting our future kindergarten parents and students. And remember, MacArthur stars always shine. Thanks for joining us. So our kinder kindergarten team welcomes you to Douglas MacArthur. We're so excited to meet your children and get to know your families. Um, you will be amazed on how much your child will learn in kindergarten. We teach reading, writing, math, science, and social studies. You can see many of these concepts are listed on this slide right here for you. But remember, we learn so much more than just what's here. Um, I would say the most important thing we learn in Kindergarten is making connections and building those relationships. Why do we love MacArthur? This is a good example of these pictures are how kindergarten is taught. It is a hands-on program. The children learn by doing. You can see many um, activities going on. We do have a kindergarten in the cafeteria program where parents volunteer to come in and children get to experience science through growing and building and creating. They also love MacArthur because we love them. We love making connections with them and getting to watch your children grow as students and also as citizens. So in the summer, we have a week long program called kindergarten prep, which gives the students an opportunity to come into the building and experience kindergarten without um, the whole building being open and the bigger kids being around and gives us um, a chance to get to know the students before the school year actually gets going. Oh, and um, the dates are to be determined, but if you sign up for the newsletter that will be mentioned later in the this presentation, uh, you will be notified of the dates once they are published. And I wanted to interrupt, as soon as you fin complete your registration, um, you will also receive the information about K-PREP. Good evening. Um, so on this slide, um, it briefly gives you information about registration, who to contact, and how the process works. Um, starting May 5th, you will be able to register online. A time has not been announced yet as to when it's going to open up, but the date is May 5th, and we have included it, the link in the presentation. Um, also, once again, please sign up for the ACPS newsletter for any updates. I'm sure they will announce the time that that will be posted, as well as any kindergarten um, prep dates. Also, there's a link here of all the required documents. Um, one thing I did want to mention is when you do registrations, please do not submit it until you have uploaded all the necessary documents. I have also included a contact person down below. Um, I will be taking leave after June 11th and Kalia Thompson will be taking my place thereafter. So on this slide, we have the required documents. If you have any questions about the documentation that's needed and required, please feel free to reach out to me directly. And for number six, previous to this, it did talk about residency documents. Here's a detailed list of what is acceptable for residency documents at time of registration. And then Leanne will be presenting um, the health portion of registration that is required. There are some new updates to this from past years. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Leanne Desmond, like you saw in the video. I'm the nurse at MacArthur. 
Um, so for all new kindergarten students, they need to have a physical within one year of starting kindergarten and um, their immunization. So on this screen, I did highlight there is a new immunization that's required for this year. Um, all incoming kindergarten students need to have two hepatitis A vaccines. So that is new for this school year. So I wanna make sure that everyone's aware of that. Also, if your student has any um, health conditions or food allergies, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, even just starting now, we can get a start on that, making sure that they have all of the documentation that they need so that we can be um, ready for them to start day one of next year. And finally, we just want to say that we are ready and we are looking forward to a great kindergarten school year. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We hope that you are as excited as we are for next year. And at this time, we want to open up the Q&A time. So if you look at the bottom of your screen, there is a button with a chat icon and it says Q&A. So if you have any questions for any of us, you can type them in the chat at this time. Thank you again so much. There is one question and it says, do you have any idea when you'll be able to confirm K prep dates? Um, usually K prep is the first, well, this year it'll either be in the first week in August or the last week in July. The district has not established the dates. The entire district does K prep at the same time. So it's more than likely going to be the very first week in August since we're returning to school on August 24th. Please remember that this year we start school before Labor Day. So the first day of school for students is August 24th. Please don't schedule vacation because that would be an unexcused absence. <laughs> Please note that school begins on August 24th, this upcoming year. Second, how many kids um, per class? So for each class, we usually have no more than 18 students for kindergarten class. That's any other questions? This is a very quiet group tonight. <laughs> No other questions? COVID protocols. Ms. Desmond, I'm gonna let you talk about the COVID protocols, although we all know about the COVID protocols. Yes, so um, it's impossible to say for sure right now what the protocols will be for next year, because as you guys all know, the CDC continues to update things as they get more information. So, for right now, um, I can say we have at least three feet between students and six feet when they're eating. Everyone wears a mask and there's enhanced cleaning going on in the classrooms. We also have air filters in every classroom, but it is impossible because as they get more data and they have more information, they update the rules. So as we get closer to the start of the new school year, we'll be able to tell you for sure what the protocols are gonna be for next year keep checking. Um, ACPS does a pretty good job of updating the website with the new protocols and the CDC is always updating their website with their new recommendations. So definitely keep up on that. Um, we'll all figure it out together. And as Nurse Desmond stated, the protocols change rapidly. Um, masks currently are required by all students and staff that enter ACPS facilities. So your child will need to wear a mask attending school. Um, the next question is, will guided reading instruction be taught? I'm going to pass that off to one of our kindergarten teachers. Will guided reading instruction be taught? Ms. Kasama, I'm going to call yes. you out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was just unmuting anyway. Okay. Uh, yes, it will be taught. <laughs> <laughs> So the kindergarten students will learn letter recognition <laughs> as well as encouraging them to learn their reading as well. I'm sure someone will follow up with what I'm saying. Ms. Kasama, oh, <laughs> thank you, Ms. Lutz. Um, I just wanted to add that we will take your child from wherever they are, whatever level they are coming in at, 
and we will help them to grow and develop at that level. Um, we, we always have children that come in that don't know their letters, others that know letters but not sounds, and, and uh, also we have children that come in reading already. So guided reading groups are based on their ability um, level or what information they come to us knowing already. And we build from there. Thank you, Ms. Lutz, I appreciate that. Are any summer play dates planned as in the past? So the teachers aren't privy to this planned play date um, that occurs. Those are scheduled by the PTA and we hope that the COVID protocols are in place um, for any planned play dates. Un um, unofficially, we cannot plan any play dates for the kindergarten team at this time. Um, what are the kindergarten hours? Kindergartners are there the entire full day. So our school at Douglas MacArthur, we, are, we start 30 minutes later than the rest of the district. So we start at 8.30 a.m and our hours are until 3.05 p.m. So your child will attend kindergarten for the entire day. There are no half day kindergarten sessions. It will be a full day in the fall. And the fall, we will also have five full days of kindergarten instruction. We will not be doing four days or cohort A or cohort B. There will be five full days of instruction from 8.30 a.m. until 3.05 p.m. Will they be using the cafeteria next year? Depending on the protocols that are in place, we are hopeful that we will be using the cafeteria next year. We are using it um, actually in the next upcoming week for some of the classes. Um, with the um, COVID guidelines in place, of course, are three feet. So it just depends on how the um, parameters for the COVID um, guidelines change. Currently our students do eat in the classroom with the classroom teachers. So we're not sure if that will change in the fall. Um, are you expected the kids to be issued tablets in the fall? For now, no, we will be doing live instruction. There'll be no virtual learning. Your child will be learning from the classroom teacher. There will not be students that are online. ACPS is having a virtual learning school that is separate from Douglas MacArthur. Douglas MacArthur teachers and students will not be learning virtually for the fall. We will be learning live in color, <laughs> um, face to face, five days a week from 8.05, 8.30 to 3.05. <laughs> um, will there be before, school care and or after school activities for the children. Um, as the district continues to work toward enrollment for the fall, um, those decisions will be made on where before and after care will be, as well as are we able to have after school activities. Currently, because of cleaning protocols, um, my staff, they leave the building as soon as possible so that the um, night crew can get in and clean all desks, all hand handles, everything that needs to be cleaned. So right now we're not sure. I know we don't have a lot of questions um, that we cannot answer at this time, but right now we are not sure about the before and after care. I'm sure there will be some before and after care. Currently, Patrick Henry, which is right behind us has rec. Um, and we're sure that um, hopefully we will have either rec or Campania as well, or both as we've had in the past. Let's see, the next question says, will there be encore in the encore rooms? And I've already answered, will the kids eat in the cafeteria? As soon as the district makes those decisions in regards to encore, music, and the other protocols, we will let you know. Um, please sign up for those newsletters or please stay tuned to the ACPS website. Um, we are creating the school, um, the school leadership team. We are creating the plan to reopen in the fall. So those are things that we're talking about right now, about Encore, about eating in the cafeteria, about, you know, you know, recess. Those are things that we are definitely covering and that will be outlined in the upcoming weeks. Let's see, are all staff vaccinated? 
All staff are not required to be vaccinated. And HIPAA violation would be in effect if I asked them, are you vaccinated? So that's personal and a private information that if they're free to share with me, um, but I don't require them to share and nor does the district. The next question, are specials taught virtually or in person? Currently our Encore classes, which are some people refer to as specials, are taught virtually. However, in the fall, that will probably change. I don't know the parameters around that yet. Let's see, will the kids be lying down in the class for rest? <laughs> there is no rest in public school, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, Kate Martin, go ahead and answer that. <laughs> So we are a responsive class, a uh, responsive classroom school. So we follow something called quiet time. So after lunch, the children will have an opportunity to, um, you know, sort of slow their engines down where they might be listening to music. They might be listening to the teacher read a chapter book. There might be a story playing, but it does give them an opportunity to just sort of slow down after lunch and then begin our instruction again. One of the questions is when should we expect to get a bus schedule and route information as you will not receive that information until August. Um, once the district um, knows who has registered and how many students register for MacArthur, then the bus schedules will go out to all of the families that are fully registered, you must be fully registered in order to receive this information. Will vaccinated and background checked parents ever be allowed to volunteer in the classroom as in the past years? Um, that's one of the guidelines um, that we're working on with the school leadership team. And when I say the school leadership team, that's something that all principals, um, we meet every Tuesday to discuss this so that one school is not doing anything and another school is doing something else. We want equity across the district um, in terms of returning to school. So um, we haven't discussed that. So we'll be sure to include that um, in the fall. Um, and I hope that fully vaccinated parents can come with the appropriate documentation. Um, um, not all parents are accessible, however, um, to the vaccination, as well as do they want to get the vaccination. So we have to um, be careful for all students. So um, I'll be sure to include that in the um, principal discussions on Tuesdays. That's a great comment. Will there be busing? There are buses in the fall. We currently have school buses and the school buses are um, utilizing the same COVID um, guidelines um, that we are in the school. So there will be school buses in the fall. Currently we have a carpool line that is probably one of the best oiled machines um, that I've ever seen. And we are operating with buses. Um, a, the Episcopal bus has a bus and we're operating with school buses. So we're doing an awesome job. And we have one or two actually walkers that have actually moved into um, the Taney Avenue zone. However, next year, those walkers will be attending maybe a different school, we'll see. <laughs> Uh, what happens if a staff member tests positive? If a staff or student tests positive, um, I'm gonna let Ms. Desmond handle this, but um, if a staff or student does test positive, we do have measures in place to support um, what goes, if they're at home, what happens is different from if they test positive and they happen to be at school. So Ms. Desmond. So if anyone in the classroom tests positive, there's a two day pause period um, to allow the health department to work with the school nursing staff to do contact tracing and figure out who was in close contact with that student or teacher. Anyone that was in close contact with the person who's tested positive would then have to stay home and quarantine for two weeks after their last exposure. And um, they get to go on my cool spreadsheet and call and check in with you and see how you're doing. We do have um, free testing all over the city now as well. So anyone who has been exposed to a teacher, staff or student test positive has access to free testing in the city if they um, would like to do that, which we do highly recommend. 
Um, the next question says, do you expect the school library to reopen? Um, we hope to be up and operational. Um, one of the concerns we have is library books going home and in the hands of students. So until we can um, have further information or research on that, we will um, open the library in other areas of the school. Um, does the PE or classroom include a yoga mindfulness instruction? Our PE team includes a lot of opportunities for different areas of growth. Um, we also um, partner with um, one of Alexandria's greatest um, programs. Um, oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> I forgot the name of the program. Running Brook. Running Brook. Running Brook, yes, how could I forget that? And Running Brook supplies all Alexandria schools with mindfulness activities with mindfulness um, opportunities for our teachers to participate, to bring things back to the classroom, as well as um, equipment, um, just instruction. Um, they provide staff development. So we do have mindfulness um, instruction at Douglas MacArthur and in Alexandria City Public Schools. Okay, if you are waiting for a physical form, Karen Lazo, this is a question for you if you're still here. <laughs> yes, I if, you're, am. if you're waiting on a physical form till this summer, summer birthdays, vaccines needed, how does enrollment work? So because enrollment begins May 5th and let's say your baby turns five um, the week before we start school, um, your child will be conditionally enrolled, but we do need that physical before school starts. Um, if you have something pending, you can always reach out to myself or Nurse Desmond. Um, again, it can't be more than a year from the first day of the first date when school begins. So what a conditional enrollment means that after a certain date, we give you a certain time period to submit that. If, you're, if you do not submit all documentation by a certain date, your child will be unenrolled and will not be able to assist class. So again, um, your child will still be conditionally enrolled and we will give you sufficient time to submit that documentation. Thank you, Ms. Lazo. Next question, what time does the carpool line begin? The carpool line at Douglas MacArthur begins at 8, 10 a.m. And we, it begins at 8, 10 because we are sharing a campus with Patrick Henry. So we're trying to be um, respectful guests and adhere to the guidelines we've met, um, both admin teams have met, and to ensure that things go appropriate and safe. Um, MacArthur Park's on the east side, um, Patrick Henry Park's on the west. Um, we've established our parking spaces. So our carpool line begins at 8.10 a.m. This year, the district asked that students who could be driven do so. Are you planning on asking that again in lieu of taking the bus? It is your personal decision. A bus is offered to every student in, MacArthur, in the MacArthur zone. It is your personal decision to decide whether your child rides a bus or is driven in a car. It's your personal preference. Okay, Leanne, we're back. If you are quarantined, how will students receive instruction? <laughs> oh, I can answer that. Yeah, I don't You're actually know the answer to that. I've been thinking about it. <laughs> Your child will have a substitute teacher. Um, we will be, substitute teachers will be back in the building next year. So we will have substitute teachers. As if your child, if your teacher were sick, we would call a substitute teacher as in the past. If your teacher is pregnant and has a baby, it's, you know, it's, you would have a substitute teacher. But I don't think the district has figured out just yet as far as if like one student in the classroom has to quarantine, how is that student going to get instruction? Gotcha. Um, that's something I think that the, the city is still working on. Okay, if a class has to go home and quarantine for two weeks, will virtual learning take place during the quarantine period? Well, classes haven't been shutting down. <laughs> For a two week period, um, there's no longer a two week waiting time um, for quarantine. You would have to get the quarantine testing. Um, a lot of things have changed. Um, 
So if you look online, all of the parameters are there, but a lot of, we're not doing the two weeks anymore. Okay. Given that many people have not been able to travel or visit with their extended families over a year, what are the rules regarding travel vacation for families? If a family vacation is planned during the school year, is it viewed as an unexcused? And if so, how many, how is that handled? So let me just say this. I'm gonna to speak to this in regards to vacation. Vacation is an unexcused absence across all of Alexandria City. I am a firm um, person when it comes to vacation during the school year. I know that there are opportunities that have been extended in longer weekends, in summer hours, but this is, and some people say, oh, it's just kindergarten. This is how your child begins and what they begin to think about school. So when you plan a vacation in the middle of the school year and ask the teacher for work, I'm not going to allow that teacher to provide work. And the number one reason is, is no, going on a vacation is your personal preference, but that's extra planning for my teacher, number one. And number two, them providing work doesn't substitute for instruction that is being done by a licensed individual. So um, to provide, to give, ask them to do extra work is not part of my philosophy. Um, as I said, you have the, a lot of vacation times, schedule your vacations during that time. Um, it has gone to the point where I have taken families to court because they continue to take vacation. Um, and there is no magic number. Um, you, if you get to the magic number <laughs> or an extended number, you will have to meet um, our school social, social worker and we'll come up with a support plan with the district. The district has a, um, a truancy officer and we'll come up with a support plan to support um, the days that you are missing from instruction. Um, in Virginia, you know, it's a law that you attend school. So I take that quite seriously. And Penny, may I add 15 consecutive unexcused or excused absences does end up um, with your child withdrawing from ACPS. And can also be considered for retention for the next school year. Okay, why are the school hours different than other school? Our school hours are different from other schools because we are on borrowed space <laughs> at the swing space on Taney Avenue. We are temporarily housed at Taney because we are building a brand new building that will open in January of 2023. And in order to um, compensate for the buses and the amount of people on one campus, um, it was established that Douglas MacArthur would start 30 minutes after all of the other schools. Um, how many kids attend the school and how many usually are in kindergarten? Currently we have 500 and I wanna say 52 students and the number of kindergartners I think is 82, 82, I think. That's when I last checked power school. <laughs> so um, usually we have up to 100 or more um, kindergarten students, but we want everyone to register for kindergarten if you live in the MacArthur zone. <laughs> we really encourage you to tell your friends that we're back. Um, we're five days a week. There are 22 students in a class <laughs> with an instructional assistant. So please tell your friends and your neighbors um, that we are back. We're excited to be live and in person. Um, and we hope that your children are ready to come to Douglas MacArthur. Are you expecting to retain all six sessions of kindergarten? I am praying that I retain all six sessions. You know what I'm hoping for? That I get another. <laughs> I'm hoping that I gain and that I have so many kindergartners coming back that 
I get an additional kindergarten teacher. So I encourage you to enroll early so that we can start this placement and so that I don't lose a teacher to another school. So please enroll your students as soon as possible. On May 5th. <laughs> May 5th, please go to the link and register. I'll be sure to have my support specialist um, post something on our website. If not, it, I'll send it out on Facebook. I'll send it out in our my newsletter. I send out a weekly newsletter to our family and communities. I'll be sure to include you on that if you register for that. If you go under um, ACPS News, you can choose which schools you would like information from. Um, please um, register for our newsletter that goes out weekly so that you will have updates on our construction. You'll have updates on what goes on in the classroom and you'll have start dates and ending dates. Um, do we expect field trips? I don't know <laughs> if we are going to honestly have any field trips in the fall. We haven't planned that far. We're just planning to one, be in that building, um, two, maybe some virtual field trips. I know that's what we were doing this year is a lot of virtual field trips. Um, so, you know, things are not 100% back to normal in the real world realm. So we can't jump in head first in the real world yet. Um, I know that kindergarten is a great age for the pumpkin patch. Um, for the zoo. Um, I love all of those things about the kindergarten, but we are just not quite sure. We are just happy to be back and in session for five days. Um, thank you so much. They said thank you so much for um, a wonderful presentation and for all you do. I just want to wish all of my kindergarten teachers and staff a happy teacher appreciation week. Thank you for going above and beyond, especially this after hours um you are wonderful they give more than you know um they give of their time they give of their hearts um, and that's the biggest thing is that they give to your child everything that they would give to their own um this is a place of learning of growing of making mistakes and learning from your mistakes um so we hope that you will come and learn and grow with us and MacArthur stars shine brightly. I think I have all of the questions in the Q&A. Everyone's saying thank you for the wonderful presentation. It will be posted to our website. Please be sure to register soon for the 21-22 school year on Wednesday, May 5th. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Penny Harrison. And I, again, as I said, I'm the very proud principal of this fabulous kindergarten team. Thank you, ladies. Thank you to our interpreter. Thank you, Ms. Pittman. Thank you, Karen. And thank you to our nurse, um, Ms. Desmond. Um, I appreciate you all. Good night, everybody. I think we're still recording, but sign off, y'all, on the Teacher Appreciation Day. Thank you so much. It was amazing all of you all of your part in